Church, will you join me in welcoming the whole wide world to Open Door Church in Burleson, Texas? Y'all, this is the Open Door Experience. Boom. Bless you guys and call y'all blessed in the mighty name of King Jesus. Guys, if you would, please open up your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 8. And while you're opening your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 8, if you guys will put up with me, I'm going to give a shameful plug for something because it's relevant to what I'm talking about today. Friends, I have a daily devotional that's designed to be prophetic, and you can get it in hardback form or you can get it as a free resource sent to your email box. Does any of you guys get the data transformation already? Awesome, awesome. It's free, and all you got to do is go to troyburr.com and get that. But the reason why I'm saying that is to say this, that we are working on another one that is the Daily Transformation, but it is the Numbers That Preach edition. So what the numbers, what the, and this is going to be available by Christmas time, and what the Numbers That Preach edition is, January 1st is going to have a 1-1 scripture. Y'all starting to see where this goes, right? And then you're going to get all the way into August 18th, and when you get into August 18th, it has to have an 8-18 scripture, right? Well, guys, that's actually where we are today. So, guys, today, which I love this, is 818, and there is a very special scripture that I want to bring to your attention that has the prophetic numbers of 818, and there's actually a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of scriptures and a whole bunch of things regarding 818 that we've done a huge study on that has to do with the Spirit of the Lord giving you the wealth and the power to change something. Last year, there was a huge rally in Dallas. We're in Dallas, Texas. I was invited to come there, Brother Lou Engle. How many of you guys ever heard of Brother Lou Engle? I want to tell you something. You guys think I'm cray-cray? That brother. I'm telling you right now, that guy's awesome, man. And he's crazy. And he met, we all had this huge rally in downtown Dallas, Texas, which is where abortion was unleashed in the United States right there at the federal building in downtown Dallas, Texas. And when we met on 818 is whenever it was, a, it was actually a year ago today. And we all got together and we prayed. And guys, can you, have y'all seen how the tide has been turned this last year? And how the spirit of the Lord is moving, is moving out. And you know what? This whole, let me tell you, killing babies is all about bell worship. And it's about a spirit of bell is what it's all about. And guys, I'll just tell you something. I can see a huge momentum change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Well, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18 says this, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he might establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. As I already mentioned, friends, today is August the 18th, and this is the day I'm preaching on. And so this is yours to claim on this day. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Now, yesterday was August the 17th, and that's a big deal to me because that's my brother Todd Brewer's birthday. Now, that brother turned 51 yesterday. He's an old dude in a crude mood. Hallelujah. But it was also the great David Crockett's birthday, and that brother turned 229 yesterday. And I say glory to God and happy birthday to both of them. I want to, whenever you, whenever you get up and you, you want to talk about something like this, immediately you know there are going to be people like, all right, Ethel, you need to hang on your purse. Hang on, get ready. There's not going to be another offering done here today. That's not going to happen. And also, too, just the audacity of actually speaking on a true prosperity message, it just really makes a lot of people mad who demand that you be defeated and you call it Jesus. And one of the things that, I, and I know that there's a lot of junk that's, taught concerning finances. I know that. I know that there's so much junk, you know, about all that. And, but you know what, that's, that's no reason for us not to walk in the truth. Amen. Whenever I look at this scripture, one of the things that, that I recognize right off the bat is that wealth is not a sin. If being wealthy was a sin, God would not give you the power to gain it. Amen. But you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of, I'm not really sure that we understand wealth so much as the way that the kingdom wants us to understand it. Now, I'm not going to say that it, that it doesn't have anything to do with having money, because it does. I'm not going to get up and say that. But I'm also going to say this, too, that there are, there are times in my life where I didn't have any money at all, but I was still wealthy. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you what I mean about that. Guys, there's a difference between wealth and riches. Now, when it comes to wealth and riches, there are also a difference between rich people and wealthy people. 
And guys, we got to make sure that we're on the right side of the cross when it comes to wealth and riches and when it comes to being rich or when it comes to being wealthy. Riches are the things that you can go after. Riches are the things that you have. And riches are also the way that you make money. But riches are fleeting. Riches change all the time. No matter how cool of a, of a Harley you got, you know why it's going to break down sooner or later. No matter how cool of a boat that you got, it's still going to sit there and you're never going to use it. <laughs> riches change. And the whole world is after riches. But wealth, whenever it comes to wealth, wealth is how what you have impacts the world. So you can put it this way. Riches are the things that the way that you're getting money while wealth is what you have and how you influence with it. Rich people are lured and attracted to riches and wealthy people are lured and attracted to making a difference and and into making a powerful impact. Rich people are motivated by what they can gain and wealthy people are motivated by what they can accomplish. Wealthy people are motivated by their dreams and their purposes and their passion and friends. That is so kingdom. It is so kingdom. And this is also why you need to have a holy hatred for poverty. I have a holy hatred for poverty. Why? Because where there, wherever poverty is, there's no dreams, there's no purpose, and there's no passion. So it is God that gives you the power to gain wealth. It is God that gives you the power to gain the ability to impact and like, well, but that don't have anything to do with money. No, I'm not going to say it doesn't have anything to do with money because it does. But it's not about money. It's about what money can bring. Money is a very neutral thing. Uh, for people who say, well, you know, uh, the, Jesus said that, that money is evil and the root of all evil. No, Jesus said the love of money is the root of all evil. And that word money is also the same exact term of riches that I'm talking about. The things that you can accomplish, I just need more, just need more, just need more. I need more of this, I need more of that. I need this appetite, this, this animalistic appetite that all of us have that get us into so much trouble. You know, the devil doesn't come, you know, with a pitchfork and with horns and a hood. He comes in the things that you're after. And that's why, guys, we have to seek first the kingdom. And that's why we have to be passionate about King Jesus. And that's why we have to have such a huge value for the heart of King Jesus. Guys, remember that the, that the most common two lies that a snake will speak into your life to keep you into poverty is, number one, it's somebody else's fault if you're not successful. And number two, it is somebody else's responsibility to make you successful. Those two lies are just bought by deceived people all over the world. Well, if I'm not successful, somebody needs to show up and make me successful. And if I don't have anything, it's because somebody else didn't give it to me. Do not believe that. Believe what the Word of God says that you have to remember God because He's the one that gives you the power to gain wealth. I'm going to continue this on Wednesday night. One of the big things I'm going to be talking about on Wednesday night is the difference. How that, how that we have to have this dual mentality where we are both remembering and watching at the same time. Remembering has to do with you need to regard the heart of God. Watching and being watchful means you have to pay attention to kingdom and uh, supernatural things. And that's our responsibility. It's not my responsibility for you. It's not anybody else's responsibility. We have to be people that are both remembering and watching. How am I doing so far? Okay. Because I'm amen and way better. I'm sorry, I'm preaching actually way better than y'all are amen and yeah. Okay, so, so it says with faith, he gives you the power to gain wealth. It's part of your faith package. Now, guys, this word power, he says, remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to gain wealth. I'll tell you this, he doesn't give you wealth. He gives you the power to grow, go, and grab it. He doesn't give you wealth. He gives you the power to go after it. Now, what does the word power mean? It means vigor. It means the capacity or the means to do something. Whereas with men, it is, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Amen. So power is supernatural strength is supernatural strength is a big part of your faith package. It came, listen, whenever, whenever you first received King Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the living God literally came to live inside of you. 
And you know what that is? It's the same exact power that resurrected Jesus from the dead. It sure is. Oh, my gosh. David said in Psalms chapter 62, verse 11, he says, God spoke once, yet twice. I've heard this, that power belongs to God. He says, if I can find God, I can find power. (laughs) If I'm looking for power outside of anywhere other than the realm of God Almighty and upon his throne, I'm looking in vain. Man, I like that. Isaiah said in chapter 40, verse 29, that he gives power to the weak. Daniel said hundreds of years before before Christ in his prophecy of King Jesus, Daniel said, you, O God, are the king of kings, for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, and he's given you power and strength and glory. Man, I love that. Jesus himself prophesied to the disciples saying, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And then, of course, the Bible goes on to say that the disciples actually did preach in power. And this is what it says in Acts chapter 4, verse 33. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them. Great God-given ability to overcome was upon them. And guys, the Hebrew word in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18 for wealth means this. Wealth means a force whether of means or some other resources. A force that God gives you. Remember the Lord your God because he gives you the ability to gain a powerful force of momentum that makes an impact. Wealth. Wealth. Man, I like that. A force means an unstoppable an unstoppable Now, if the house is in order, somebody will stand up and interpret that. Hallelujah. (laughs) You get up and preach all the time. See, if you don't get up and say something stupid. I'm so going to make fun of you when you do. It means an unstoppable momentum. And in this case, it means finances. It means assets. So God Almighty... If if we will remember the Lord, if we will put him first, if we will regard him, if we will be kingdom people that are looking for him to have dominion, we'll look around and see, man, that looks sad. That doesn't look like God rules and reigns. So God Almighty gives us the power, the God-given ability to gain an unstoppable momentum to attack hell. For the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence take it, the violent take it by force. So I want you guys to look, you guys remember Deuteronomy 8.18 says this, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to gain wealth, that he might establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. This is a covenant issue. And again, on Wednesday night, I'm going to have a lot lot more time to unpack this. This is part of the covenant. And guys, we serve a covenant God who takes his covenant so serious. And, And if you're not taking it serious, can I tell you, you've been given permission to take this very, very, very seriously. You ever had a time in your life where you said, now, God, this is what your word says, and I'm taking this serious. Amen? Well, you know, you, you believe in God for maybe the healing, or maybe you're believing God for, for restoration, or maybe you're believing God for something else. Well, friends, we need to take this scripture very, very, very serious because this is part of his covenant. Now, I'm going to give you the PTV, the Pastor Troy version of this verse, and I always give the amplified PTV, Okay. So this is, after breaking all this down, this is how we do this. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability, the capacity, and the supernatural power to grow, go, and grab an unstoppable momentum of finances, assets, and influence. Amen? Well, that's the word. And I want to just tell you this, if you're walking in something different other than this, I want to invite you to start going after this. Well, Pastor Troy, we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful whenever we do these things. Listen, you need to read all of Deuteronomy chapter 8 because it's God saying, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to bless you. And don't you dare leave me out of that. Amen. It starts off with and, meaning you need to know what all the other verses are before that. And let me tell you what the verses are before all that. I'm going to give you... A promised land, and when you walk in the promised land, you're going to live in houses you didn't build. You're going to have wells you didn't dig. You're going to to have vineyards that you did not plant. And then he goes on to say this, and then he goes on to say, you best not leave me out of that. So God doesn't say, be careful to go after this. He says, be careful to not leave me out. He never one time says, man, be careful about prospering. He says, be careful that you don't leave me out, but you need to prosper. 
See, that's the true prosperity message. The true prosperity message is this. Man, you're smart. You're important. You have something to offer that nobody else has to offer. And dadgummit, you need to prosper. Now, here's what you need to be careful about. Love God. You don't, need to be, you don't need to be careful about having money in a bank. You don't need to be careful about having income streams. You don't need to be careful about going after something. You don't need to be careful um, um, about your upgrade. You don't need to be careful about your dreams. No, no, no. You don't need to be careful about those things. You just need to make dang sure that you do not leave God out of that. That's what the Bible says. So here's what I ask you to do. I want to ask everybody here to stand up. I'll go ahead and ask the guys in the band to come on up. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm going to get us all to make a declaration. And guys, if you're not somebody that's familiar with how declarations work, let me tell you this. Nothing in the kingdom happens without a declaration. Um, you don't just go to war. You declare war. That's what you do. The light just doesn't come on. God has to say, let there be light. And then there is light. Amen. Um, we're going to be talking about that a lot in the year to come. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But the bottom line is this. I have, um, I'm going to be actually be reading from our battle cry for financial freedom where our team has put together, and I have 20 some odd of these on different subjects now. They're like, well, you're just trying to sell those. Dude, they're like five bucks. Okay. It's not like we're going to make a billion dollars unless we sell a billion of these. Let it be in Jesus name. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> if you don't have the money for this, I'll tell you what, I'll give you one. Okay. Really, if you don't have, if you like, there's no way I can ever afford anything that expensive. Come to me and I'll just give you one. Amen. And this is going to help you. Now, what it has on it is it has the scriptures that I just talked about. And then it has, and then it has declarations. And then it has prayers that my team and the elders of the church came up with. Because I want us all in unity about this. So what we're going to do, I'm going to ask my brother to, to start some keys if we could. How are you today, JD? You doing good? Good, man. It's good to see you, buddy. Pastor AJ, we're just going to just make this a holy moment, man. And then you guys can loop into whatever you guys want to. All right. But I'm just going to, guys, let's all just lift our hands to King Jesus for just a minute. Father God, sir, we love you, Lord, and we praise you and we thank you. God, we need you, Lord. God, we are totally dependent upon you. Totally. 110% dependent upon you, Lord God. Father, I pray, God, in the name of King Jesus, God, that as we declare, as we prophesy, God, that you would hear the cries of our heart and the words of our mouth. And I love you and praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Friends, I want you all to repeat after me. We're going to put this on the screens. I declare in, the, in, I declare in Jesus' mighty name. I am a supernatural giver and... And I have joy and generosity. I can be trusted with worldly wealth and with true riches. I'm content with the things I have. And you, God, supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. I sow bountifully and I reap abundantly. 30, 60, and 100 fold. My heart is with you, Lord. And so is my treasure. I'm a lender and not a borrower. You're blessing the works of my hands. You have brought me streams in the desert and highways in the wilderness. You have given me the power to gain wealth. Accelerated timelines and trajectory are mine. You are advancing me to new heights and obstacles are being removed. I will not live in poverty. I am in alignment for my assignment. I'm going after my destiny. This is your covenant and this belongs to me on 818 According to, Deut according to Deuteronomy 8.18. Now release angels for the performance of your word. I believe it. I receive it. I am ready. I am grateful. In the mighty name of King Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. We love you, Lord.